Hey guys, welcome back to the stream, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to yet another video. This is actually going to be a new video series because we're working on this guy right here. And that is the F-15E Strike Eagle by GWH, uh, 148 scale. GWH, I keep wanting to call it Great West Hobbies, but I believe it is Great Wall Hobbies. Um, you guys might be wondering, why are you building an F-15E when you had already started on an F-15K a few weeks ago? Well, let's get into that. As you guys might remember, I started working on this little guy right here. Um, my F-15K, uh, R-O-K-A-F, um, F-15K by Academy. And uh, as I was getting to it and building it, I realized the quality of the kit was not, oh, well, it's not to my liking. And just the, the fit and everything is, it's not what I want it to be. And I want to do, I want to pay homage to the Korean Air Force. Um, so I want to do a good kit and I want a good quality kit, which is why I had done things like buying the photo etched cockpit pieces and resin seats and things like that. And the resin nozzles, like you guys watched me put these things together. The exhaust nozzles, because these didn't come in the kit. We had our, remember this, right? This is what comes in the kit. And this is what you actually get. Um, so this is much better. And I wanted to do put these in. And then this kit is turning out to be a very... Well, it's not up to Tamiya standards, <laughs> to put it lightly, okay? Um, yeah, so I went on the internet and I figured, okay, what's a better kit? What is going to be better? Basically, the F-15K is really just an, a modernized F-15E. It's really all it is. They got some better armaments on it, so better radar, stuff like that, right? It's really all it is. It's just a repurposed F-15E that the Americans sold to South Korea. Hence the K on the end. That's all it is, really. So, who makes a good F-15E? Well, Tamiya makes one, but it's 132nd scale. And I don't have the room for another 132nd scale F-15. I've already got my F-15C that I built a while back. Um, I'll put a link to that if you're interested. Um, so I don't have room for another one like that. So I need another 148 scale uh, F-15E. So who makes them? To me, it doesn't make one. I was really surprised. To me, it doesn't make an F-15E and 148. Why do they only make the 132nd? Anyway, that's them. I don't know why, but that's what it is. So, and I definitely don't want a Ravel one. Ravel sucks. Um, sorry, guys. I used to love Ravel back in the day, but now they do not meet my standards at all as far as kit quality. Um, proof in point is Mavericks F-14. <laughs> Watch my series on that and you'll see why I hate the Ravel. It doesn't leave me a lot of options until I found this. The Great Wall Hobbies F-15E. From what I've seen, that's the kit to go for. And so I did. So I have it, and it is right here. Big box, big box here. That's it. Yeehaw! Um, so I'm gonna build this first. Okay, I'll build this first. This is gonna be my ROKAF F15K, and I'll build the Academy one later. But I believe that one's just going to be a a paint mule, you know. Um, this guy is just going to be 
one that I try out some different paints on and stuff like that, different techniques, blah, blah, blah. And so that's what's going to happen with that. That will be that one. Okay, so let's look at this guy. I've already opened this up and found out this is a full box of sprues. There are a lot of parts on this and these guys do something that I've never seen in a modern aircraft build before. And I'll show you. These guys go um, far and beyond the Call of Duty with this kit. First of all, first of all I got a gripe. Okay? Seam line across the canopy. Uh, I already griped about that with the Academy kit. Seam line across there. Of course this one I've cleaned up and I polished up and that seam line is gone. But in cleaning it up, I discovered something with the with the Academy kit. The details for the uh, canopy separation lines, there is nothing. But they've got it molded on the inside. It's on the inside. Not on the outside. So, if you want to paint this, you've got to paint the inside of it. Because if you paint the outside, it's going to look absolutely stupid. Who the heck puts the molding on the inside of the canopy? That is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And it just makes me more happy that I've switched to this guy, and I'm going to be building that instead. These guys are smart enough. There we go. We've got molding on the outside. The other thing that uh, they've done differently, they've got the actual frame around the glass on there and they don't on this. This is just the glass so the frame is separate on the Academy kit than it is on the on the Great Wall kit. So that's nice, that's better. Thank you very much. So, but I would still gripe about the seam line. Now one thing I did learn a little bit about the reason why, if you watched my Academy build, one of the first things I complain about is that seam line and how some companies, they, some kits, they have them, some they don't. Why is that? What's going on? Why can't they just make them all the same and not have to deal with cleaning up those lines? And this is what I found out. In the whole molding process, they have these dies and these molds that go together and they press together like that and then the injection mold, in, inject that mold, the plastic in there, heat it up or whatever, it's hot, it's pressed, and then it cools and they pull, the part, uh, pull it apart. When you have a canopy that's shaped like a U, or I guess upside down U, depending on the orientation, when this shape, okay, this shape here is like a U, they have no problem making it a mold that is one piece and it goes like this, it molds it and it pulls off and there you have your piece. That's not an issue and you don't have your seam line. But when the canopy is more of a shape like a C, a C that's rolled over, <laughs> um, where it's not like a U like this, but it's like that, where the tips are curved in. Now suddenly you can't do that with the same mold, because that mold needs to pull off, and if they're like this, like that, when they go to pull it off, that piece is going to go with it, because it can't, you know, it can't release. So they have to do it in two halves, and have the molds do this. And that's why we have seam lines on some and seam lines on others that we don't have. And that's what I learned. Just in this last week, I learned that. And uh, that makes sense. What doesn't make sense to me, however, 
The 148 scale Tamiya F15C has no seam line, but the 32nd scale does. So if they can get away with it in the 48 scale, why can't they get away with it in the 32nd? Tamiya, that's, that's for you to answer. Anyway, I'm rambling now. This is done. Okay, I got cleanup to do on that. I have instruction booklet. Boom. We've got, um, it gives us the list of all the sprues that come with this thing. Very nice double-sided sheet. A little bit of art. It's all in, uh, I think it's Chinese. But anyway, we got that and we have our booklet, our actual book. Um, 19 pages, 19, 19 pages of instruction book with the odd photograph of the real thing as references. That is a really nice touch. The instructions are quite nicely laid out. This of course is my first uh, Great Wall Hobby kit that I've ever made. So it's nice that uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a first experience thing for me, right? I've never, never built anything from them before. So, it's nice to see they've really put some effort into their kit. Um, fairly straightforward. Everything seems like it's going to be pretty easy to do as far as building this thing. We've got our a nice photo for um, color pictures for painting the weapons and the ordinances where all the decals go on the ordinances and the weapon pods it's a very nicely detailed instruction booklet and I'm impressed to me a level definitely if not one slight step above speaking of that let's look at these screws I would say very close to Tamiya level, if we're using Tamiya as a standard, right? Um, it looks like they're pretty good at the detail that they're doing on it. And I'm not seeing a lot of any flashing. Everything seems to be very nicely done. The panel lines are all looking fairly deep and crisp. Um, it's looking like a pretty impressive little kit. And it seems like I've got a couple of spare parts, and I'll show you that on the next sprue. So that's it for this one. There's not really much else to talk about on that one. The next one. I don't know why, but they've given me two nose cones. They look like they are absolutely identical. Although they are two different numbers, number 38 and 39. So they look very close. There's obviously going to be some kind of difference in them. I just don't know what it is. Um, for fuselage, we actually have panels for the radar controls and all that stuff on each side. To me, as 132nd scale F15 only has one side that's open, that opens up. And this has both sides, so they're a, a step up from there. And in Timia's 48 scale F15, you don't have that at all. So, what's up with that, Timia? Come on, step up your game. These guys are obviously wanting to be competitive. So, they're giving me what looks like two different... Um, cockpit panels plus we've got our Wizzo for the back yeah anyway there's that there are a lot of sprues going on here they divided this into a bunch of different ones for the weapon targeting pods radar stuff more of it 
we've got our fuel tanks fuel tanks here pretty straightforward nothing special on those we've got our belly lower part of the fuselage again panel lines very nice and crisp through there I'll change the camera I'm gonna get it change the camera so it's a bigger view for you give you the overhead cam here and uh, uh, well, that makes sense. Oh, uh, hello, make a boy. Um, yeah, so there you go. So, put these back in. Love the little cage that they've put the, around this to uh, contain all this stuff for you and keep it kind of, sort of contained. We've got more weapon pod stuff. We've got two sprues of those. This, like they've gone, this is almost Bandai level of sprues that they've got in here. More weapon pod detail stuff. Tons of it. Tons of stuff. This is a section I know from looking at the instructions. This kind of goes inside the fuselage for the nose when you're connecting the nose. Uh, we have our air intake runners. Those will be simple enough to put together. Air intakes. Um, so, haven't done these yet, so we'll see how these go together and see whether they live up to uh, to me as standards or if they're more like the Academy ones which were a bit of a pain in the neck to assemble we'll find out soon enough two of these okay now here we come to the thing that I've never seen before what I was talking about I have yet to encounter a kit where we have a full length engine full-length engine assembly including the nozzles which have the modern version of the F-15 nozzles and not the old-school ones we have everything full complete engine assemblies from, in from intake to exhaust and yet there's no panels on the outside of the plane for you to open up and actually see it. Yet they went to the bo went to the point of actually building the whole thing, and we got two of them. They actually did that. I've never seen that before in a kit. And speaking of old school nozzles, we have old school nozzles also, if that's what you want to build. If you want to build a, a an F-15E from the 90s, um, you have that option. You've got both both sets. More weapon pods. Again, here's where they've done something right. They've molded this all in one big piece. This is beautiful. No line separations um, here and here like I would, I'm would. i going to get on the Academy kit because the wings are separate from the fuselage. We even have separate pieces for our tail fins. This, our control surfaces are completely separate and put on. That's a nice touch. Very well done. One final sprue. One final sprue. This is the underside of the wings and lower half of the fuselage. This is where I said we have some option because I have two of these pieces. And uh, yeah, there you go. So let's go back. So now that that's all the sprues, except for one little box. I'll get to that in a sec. Let's just put some of these away. Because the first thing we need to tackle, of course, is the cockpit. So 
we get through these and get started on it. The cockpit is always the first thing, right? Okay. The last thing we have is this little box. This came inside the kit. And it's our AIM-120 and the AIM-9M missiles, all on their own little sprue, one-piece missiles. Again, I've never encountered a kit that they do this kind of, this level of detail on them. Um, I've never seen this before. That's, uh, that's beautiful. It's one piece. No flashing, no nothing. And they included that in its own separate little box to keep them both nice and safe during their travels. <laughs> Who does that? I mean, it's crazy. It makes me want to look into other Great Wall Hobby kits that maybe, maybe there's something I should be looking into. Anyway, the other thing that I got for this is the photo etch, um, photo etch stuff for the cockpit uh, by Edward. Um, this is just for the seat, okay? And this one's for our display panels and all that stuff. So. I'm going to work on this section right here, which is this. Although this is quite nicely detailed, the raised portions of the of the buttons and switches is pretty good. Unfortunately, this is just better. And I will show you again. I'll zoom in for you so you can see. It is just... Oh yeah, I forgot I've got that locked. I've got the zoom. I've got the focus locked on this. But, yeah. Um, the detail is just a lot better than I can paint, so that's just the way it's going to be. And unfortunately, um, I looked on I looked on Red Fox Studios, hoping that they made their versions of it, but they don't. And so I was a little bit disappointed in that because I do like Red Fox Studios stuff. Because their stuff is uh, resin. That's these guys kind of th stuff. You guys have seen me put these on before, right? Um, it's uh, it's resin stuff. Well, it's acrylic, as they call it. Quick set 3D acrylic instrument panels. Yeah, these things are really awesome. If you don't like painting your dials and stuff, I highly recommend these guys. The Red Fox Studios. These are good. I love them. Better than the Photo Etch because they actually give that 3D raised look, right? This stuff, they try a little bit, but it's still pretty flat. And you don't, it doesn't give you that illusion of actual buttons and switches. So I'm going to take my file and file this down smooth based on where these things go. So like this panel back here, I'm only doing this front part. This back part doesn't get anything. Well, it does, but that's smooth, so it's fine. So we're basically, switch my camera again, sorry. Um, basically gonna file this down flat. So to give it a nice good surface to stick to. This stuff is not sticky, so I'll be gluing it down with CA glue. So I do want to make sure that the surface is pretty flat and smooth to give me a good surface for the glue to stick to. Now, if we wanted, if you were really worried about it, you could um, put some, you know, maybe some Mr. Surfacer black on here and before you file, so you can really tell once that paint is gone, you know you've got your surface that you need to be f flat. And again, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. 
especially because you're going to be gluing it down with CA glue and so it's really just about getting a decently flat surface. I'm going to refer to my little instruction book here to see which other pieces I need to file down. We've got, a, we've got one that's going to go in the back here. I need to take a look at it. That's number 11 on here. That's this one here. So that is going to go in right along here. But I need to... here first there we go now I should be able to use the edge nice thing with this file is it's got the file on the edge also so in those tight spots you can use the edge and it files almost as good as as the edge or as the flat side but since we're just going for a flat edge we don't need anything more <sighs> we should be good We don't want the photo etch piece to be raised up. That looks pretty good. Okay, next piece is the front, both pieces. So these are all going to be going here and everything except our little throttle control, okay? far you want to send, file this down and sand it, that's totally up to you. It's totally your call. If you want to get it perfectly smooth, that's, that's up to you. If you don't care about perfectly smooth and you just want it kind of good enough that it's going to lay down and stay there, well, you can do that too. I am kind of in between. I want it perfectly flat. I don't care if it's perfect. Okay, I think that should be good enough. I could go a little further on this side, I think.
basically if all the detail is gone and you can't even tell that there was anything there, I think you're good enough. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Let's try getting this down a little bit better here. I did a really fantastic job on the front for the pilot. I haven't done so good a job for the guy in the back. And I should. surfaces are pretty flat now so let's just get some of my plastic off of there good enough so because it's photo etched I don't want to cut into my mat because it will just bend the metal which is why it's best to cut on glass speaking of photo etch the kit actually comes with photo etch also um, it's probably the uh, the burners on the engine and a couple little meshes and pieces plus these yeah comes with photo etch too I forgot I actually took one of the seats out and I decided to assemble it and although the seat is a big improvement upon the Academy one um, it's still lacking in the detail department compared to the resin seat that I have already built and so I'm still going to be using the resin seats they're just going to be going in this kit instead of the Academy and when I get around to building the Academy kit I'll use these seats because they are still an improvement they're just you know they're level two not level three so junk here. Okay, this is my little piece of glass that I use for cutting my photo etch on. So let's get our pieces off of here. So there's one, okay, so this is going to go back here, and this spot here. Back like that. And go right there. Now I notice there's a hole, there's holes in there for the control sticks for the Wizzo um, that are going to be covered up, including one for his display. The hole for his display is going to be covered up also. And so I have a little bit of concern about that because that means his display is going to come down in front of it which would not be right because why would there be controls behind the display? You know what I'm talking about? That doesn't seem right. And 
it probably doesn't seem right because I'm putting the wrong piece back there. This piece actually goes here. Doesn't that make a lot more sense? <laughs> it does make a lot more sense. That's the piece that goes there. So what piece goes there? We want number 30. This guy here, he's got a big notch in him. So, let's get that off of there. There's number 30. All right, look at that. How about that? We have the hole for the joystick and we have the hole maintained for the display. That's how that's going to go just like that. Alright, so that's those two. And then we have our other two, Ding and Dong. They're going to go here and here. And we've got two more. One's going to go across in here and the other one's going to go back here. But we'll worry about those in a minute. Let's get our other two big panels off and have a look at those and how that's going to fit. Let's see here. This direction. those two pieces. This one goes up front here. Just like that. And this one, I want to try and pay attention to the orientation. This, with all the buttons, they face forward. And he slides in back here. Like that. And that's how that sits. So, let's grab some CA glue and get to work on that. Cap almost always gets glued shut. getting close to retiring this particular bottle. But I'm just not ready to just yet. Just not yet. Grab my little applicator tweezer and we'll take 
these off. I'll start with the smaller one and do this guy first. So just dip in there. I'll just put some down. That should be plenty. I think one of the reasons why I keep using this particular bottle of CA is it doesn't cure quite so fast. It gives me about five to ten seconds to manipulate a part before it really starts to, to take hold. And in fact, if I've got a piece that I really need to like it just doesn't fit very well or it's very extremely small and delicate. This stuff doesn't glue fast enough for me sometimes. That's probably going to be plenty for this piece. Sometimes, no matter how good you think you've cut it, you still have evidence of little nubs. And sometimes a photo etch is so precise in how it fits, you need to really get take care of those things. There we go. So there's our pieces put in. Just making sure I've got them lined up properly because you get overhang on the outside. Next thing you know, your cockpit don't fit together properly. Like I had a little piece here that was just hanging out a little bit, sticking out from the edge. And just noticing that, it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's hanging out here. I gotta push that in and make sure it's lined up. 
But anyway, there's our four panels put in. We've got two more. So let's find find those here. Well, there's three actually. 15 goes in front here on top of that. Okay. So we want number 1, 15, and 22. Three pieces. Number 1, 15, and 22. Number 1, that's easy. That one's easy to figure out. is right here. Fifteen and we wanted twenty-two. Twenty-one, twenty-two right here. three little squares. So, number one goes into this spot here, but I want to make sure that I got my little nubs taken off. The way I like to do that with my photo edge is get my good tweezers and grab it very close to the edge and that way I can do this and get rid of that little nub flip it over and do the same thing on this side perfect okay now, I need to see, does this go down on top or inside? It goes on top. Okay. Thank 
Okay, so he's going to go in that spot there. So I'm just going to hold on to him. apply glue to the spot. I'm going to try and drop him in place. This is just a little bit more precarious. sit there for a minute, but not face down, because it does have CA glue on it now. Okay, sitting like that is going to be fine with me. I didn't know it went here, so I didn't sand this down. And I've got a little nub that I need to get rid of right there. Because it looks a little ridiculous sitting up in the air. Okay, let's get another little drop. And let's try putting them back down. again. Better. All right. So he's in spot in this place. Finally, we got this guy. Let's see if I can do this. Similar fashion, file that little nub off of them, get them nice and smooth, and use another pair of tweezers to turn them around. He's going to go on a very another panel very close by, right beside him here. This one, he has no orientation. He's just a little blue panel. It's just a little blue panel that goes right there. to do to make sure it all stays where it's supposed to. I just take my accelerator and we can do that and through its own capillary action we'll go underneath there everything and we'll make sure everything is dry and stays put where it's supposed to. 
and that's it. Now, obviously there's a lot more to do with the cockpit than just that, okay? But <clears throat> I've got catching up to do to get to to get to the point where I was with the Academy kit, I got a lot of work to do on this, right? I have intakes to, I've got to paint the inside of these white, and I've got to assemble those. I've got the seats to put in. I don't have to put the seats in right now, but that was step one, building the seats. I've got railings and things to put in the cockpit. Um, all these details that we just didn't have in the other kit, right? There's a, uh, a bulkhead wall that goes in right here. Um, all these little details. The uh, front landing gear bay is actually three walls that get assembled separately. So I've got to paint those. Yeah, there's uh, quite a bit to do. So if I take, um, let's find our sea tree. Can I find my sea tree at least? What tree is this? X. While we're going through these, I'm gonna do my little trick that I do. And highlight those. Unfortunately, this is, that's a little easier to read. I have to figure out which ones of these I use. What's kind of funny is, <laughs> I actually need this X4. I need this piece right now. Which just reminded me of something I want to check out here. All right, so let's find our seed tree if we can. And this. You guys who watch me, you know I like to do this. I go through, especially on sprues that are kind of hard to find, the letters on. Some people use masking tape. I just write on them with a jiffy marker. Or Sharpie. This just does happen to be our C tree. That's the one I want. Might as well. What are you? You're a W. Of all letters to use, W. <laughs> okay. C. I need C20 and 21, 19, 20, and 21. Let's find those. Here's 20. There's 19 and 20. This is 19. This is 20. Oh, I'm sorry. I need 20, 21. So 19 had the nub on it, so I'm going to put you aside. I need 41. Right here. Okay. careful with kids this is a brand new blade that I just put on here today and you got to be really careful with brand new blades because if you're like me and you don't change your blades out for a long time you get used to the amount of pressure required 
to cut through this stuff. And then you put a brand new blade on and you start trying to use the same pressure, you wind up cutting through so fast and so easy, you wind up cutting into yourself just as quickly. And, uh, well, you definitely don't want that. Because, I mean, you don't want to get blood all over your models, right? <laughs> you definitely don't want to get blood on your models. Yeah, thank you, Yuala. Watch my fingers. Exactly. you got to be careful with this stuff. Which is why I know it's going to be hard to tell, especially on camera. Um, a technique I use to prevent from cutting myself when it actually does come through. You notice I'm using my own fingers to put so that I'm, I'm not just doing this, right? I'm using my fingers, I'm putting them in, in certain places so that I'm bracing myself against myself so that well, if it does jump, it's not really a big jump, really, right? Um, it's just a little something you, I don't know, you get used to over the over time. My coffee's starting to get cold. Okay, so this piece goes on. Right here, like so. Sits in like that. And make sure I got this sitting the right way. Yes, okay, glue. down on that edge and now we got a couple of railings and that brace piece wherever that one disappeared to this guy and these guys These guys are going to sit in here, just like so. Okay, I don't mind that. Just realized I'm doing this and I got the wrong camera going let's go full screen on our overhead so you can kind of see what I'm doing I just put in this railing here okay so I'm gonna do that with the other one do the same thing one edge is not 90 degrees it's kind of on an angle because it sits at an angle when it touches the floor and then this little tab goes into a little notch on the back wall so, just put glue on the tab and at the bottom. Those are the only two contact points. And that is it. And now we have our cross brace, which is going to sit up top. this and 
nice and delicately. So, although it's not actually sitting at the very top. Close, but not quite. There's little notches on the back of the things for two little pegs to go into. And you get to line them up on that. And that looks about right. Just like that. So there's our front. Okay. And we're going to do the same for the back. We just don't have a bulkhead. The bulkhead's already there. So, I already have 19 taken off. So I need 22. And I need 29 is his cross brace. 30, 26, 27, 28, 29 here. All right. So I'll put this cross brace in, this or back brace, I guess. And then I'm going to call it a day. And that'll be it. So this is the 22. I don't know if there's lefts and rights, if it makes any difference on this. It might, it might not. It looks like it might on these ones. I probably got away with it on the, uh, on the front on the pilot side, but it looks like we're going to have lefts and rights on this one, so it's going to be a little bit more of, hey, let's pay attention to what you're doing and how it goes together exactly. This is 19. Okay, where's our cross brace? There we are. All right. So, we'll put 19 in first. going to go in the same fashion. A dab of glue there and a dab of glue on the tab for the back. There we go. And then we'll do this one. So those are in. Now this piece, our cross brace actually does go to the top on these ones. 
just like the uh, just like in the front there's got our two little tabs that you've got these little tiny little nubs are supposed to lock into Fortunately, it's not such tiny, tedious work that you can't get in there. It's not too bad at all, actually. So, that's that. Now, of course, the next step would be to install the seat in there like that. There are holes in the floor, there's tabs, you can lock your seat down in there, and you'd be done. Just like that. Okay? But that's not what we're doing. I'm not using the, the kit seats. But it does look pretty good. The railing on there is, adds that level of detail to it that's uh, pretty nice. But we're not using this. So. That, my friends, is where I'm going to leave it for today. We're getting there. Um, I'm going to have to add the photo etch parts to the instrument panels. That's going to be next for me. And uh, assemble the landing gear bay and yeah that, that's about it really that's gonna be next um, so like I said before that's where I'm gonna leave it here for today that's enough for now and uh, yeah I wanna thank you guys for watching thanks for coming out and uh, thanks for joining me and continuing to watch thank you to the new subscribers that I've gotten in the last week or two thank you guys so much it's really awesome. Um, yeah, if you're not already following me on YouTube, do do it. <laughs> Just do it. Um, hit that button down below. Hit subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave me comment down below. And check out in the description box. You'll see that I've put a couple of links there. And I've got links to my Twitch channel and to my Instagram. And you can follow me on Twitch. You can watch me live and talk to me while I'm doing this. Tell me I'm fat and ugly. Tell me I'm doing a great job. I don't care. It'd just be cool to talk to you guys. And you can check out my Instagram and check out still pictures that I've taken of just about everything that I've built in the past. And you can see the stuff that I do and, and all that good stuff. So, like I've said two or three times now already, um, this is where I'm going to end it for today. And that's going to be it for part one of our F15E slash K uh, R-O-K-F uh, uh, Eagle <laughs> yeah as my mind just went blank for a moment there um, so yeah that's it guys we will uh, have to continue this on next time and so until next time have a good one